So this is where we left off from the last episode. For us to progress to high voltage, we need a few things. We're going to need to get the mixer, the assembling machine, the cutting saw, the laser engraver, and the advanced circuit assembler. Alongside this, we're going to work on getting our plastic circuit boards. We're going to upgrade our EBF and probably create a new one. And we're going to unlock applied energistics. So first things first is the machine hulls. We're going to be making these the easy way with polyethylene now, and you'll see how much easier it is. We save ourselves on wrought iron and on an extra piece of aluminium. First two machines are going to be the mixer and the assembling machine. The assembly machine obviously taking a fair few motors. We need two robot arm and two conveyor modules. We'll get those placed up on our machine wall. And then we'll start crafting the saw. This requires some vanadium steel, which we'll use our mixer for. And here we'll just take a look at the silicon ball that's going to be useful for all of our circuit progression. Next is the lathe and the saw. And after getting those machines, if we want to start making it to stainless steel, we're going to need a lot of chrome, and those can be found in redstone vans. Now we're going to make our precision laser engraver and this is going to allow us to engrave the cut silicon pool to make the circuit components. The first one we're going to be using is the ruby lens to make the integrated logic circuit. To get into high voltage we need to be able to smelt the material, stainless steel. This requires two medium voltage hatches which require low power integrated circuits which requires a blue lens. In this case, we're going to make that out of sapphire. Every multi-block in the game requires an energy hatch, so we're going to try and batch craft up a few of these coils, upgrade some machines later down the line, and reuse the low-voltage ones when we can. And now, once we have these energy hatches, we need to do the blast furnace shuffle. We were using a single medium voltage turbine to run two low voltage hatches, but now we need four amps of medium voltage to get to high voltage. And that means we need four medium voltage turbines because we don't have stainless steel yet. One of the most useful aspects of applied energistics is the ability to mass store a bunch of fluids using fluid storage buses. For this, we're going to use super tanks. So we need to craft up a lot of pumps and then we need to be using our polyethylene to make the casings. And then we have our fluid storage. We're gonna upgrade our blast furnace here because we need to be able to make silicon to make better circuits. So we need higher heat capacity on the coils, which is going to be cantal. This is the first upgrade of many, and it's going to produce hot ingots when the temperature is required. Time management is an important skill in large load packs such as GregTech. While our cantal is being crafted, we're going to work on a sulfuric acid setup. Included in this is going to be a sodium persulfate setup so that we can craft our circuit boards much easier. What we first do is we take our sulfur dust and react it with oxygen to make sulfur dioxide, then we react it with more oxygen to make sulfur trioxide, and then we react it with water to make sulfuric acid. To make sodium persulfate, we react salt with sulfuric acid, which makes sodium bisulfate, and then we electrolyze the sodium bisulfate to make sodium persulfate and hydrochloric acid. 
While we don't have applied energistics yet, this is an absolute nightmare to set up. It will get much cleaner when we get applied energistics and eventually we're going to move this into a single chemical reactor. This setup is going to consume a lot of oxygen, more than the benzene setup can produce, so we won't run it constantly, especially because we do need sulfur elsewhere. A wise man once said you have to be inefficient to be efficient and unfortunately right now we have to be terribly inefficient and use a bad recipe so that we can finally get onto the good recipes. And now the circuit crafting begins. We start with the low voltage, then the medium, And finally, our first high voltage circuits. Now that we've made our high voltage circuits for the medium voltage circuit assembler, let's get on to upgrading our blast furnace. We'll put the canthol through the wire mill, and then we'll make the coils. At this point in time, I'd like to just slow it down. I know it really feels like we are rushing through here, but that's because Greg Tech really starts to get interesting the further you go along. To me, in medium voltage, I don't think that it's very interesting, uh, and I'm looking forward to getting into the high voltage stages. It's worth noting that this takes hours of recording of me sitting back and just doing micro crafting, only to get little bits of footage. It is worth it though, and I really do enjoy it, but the medium voltage episode, specifically this one, is a bit dry. I'm trying my best to make it interesting and still explain things as I go along the way, but this is a learning process and you're just going to have to bear with me on this one. Right after this little mining break, we're going to be doing a lot of circuit crafting and we're going to start to get into a little bit of chemistry, so I figured I'd give you a bit more of a break. Enjoy some block breaking sounds and a little bit of music while we uh, mentally prepare ourselves for the circuits. So the first step to making the circuits is the boards. We're going to put polyvinyl chloride sheets with sulfuric acid and copper foil to make the plastic board. This makes two, that's why we're using PVC, not polyethylene. Then we need to put that with the sodium persulfate, more copper and the plastic boards to get the plastic circuit board. And here's some silicon processing to remind you that we still use the blast furnace almost constantly. And let's make our first plastic-based circuit component. This one is the capacitor. And to continue multitasking, we're gonna make our first bits of stainless steel in the mixer. This takes six iron, nickel dust, manganese, and chrome, which is why we set up ore processing in low voltage. I wouldn't recommend doing ore processing in low voltage for anything other than the absolute necessities because it takes 20 seconds per ore to process. So we're going to have to pause here again so that I can very quickly explain something. In Greg Tech Community Edition, Applied Energistics is much more simple. There are no channels, there is no need for a controller. 
These four pieces that I'm showing right now, the calculation, engineering, logic, and silicon press are the only things that we need to get started. The next section is going to be just getting a basic applied energistics network sorted, crafting up a few storage housings and making lots of interfaces. That's it. And with that out of the way, I think it's time that we finish this episode. Today we set ourselves up into high voltage. We've begun applied energistics and we can start setting up auto crafting to make our life that much easier. Next episode, we've got big plans as you see behind me. This is just a teaser of what's to come. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.